Is it um, maybe a phase shift, but for, for, for sure a regression equation, okay? Um, so worksheet 13A. Everybody find 13? Can we just review a little bit real fast the definitions of these things? What is amplitude? Okay, so the fancy definition, it, it comes from A over in this, if we have an equation, right? But if we don't have an equation and we just have a graph, how do we figure out how to find that? Um, it's actually the distance from the middle to the top or the distance from the middle to the bottom. So it is the average of the max and the min. Does that make sense? No, that's the midline. It's the difference between the max and the min divided by two. Okay. <clears throat> The midline comes from D, yes, but when we're looking at the picture, we're going to average the max and min to find where the midline is. I don't know if anybody's thinking these are important things to write down. They are, I think, on worksheet 12 from yesterday. Do I have that one open here? Like, uh... Yeah. Hmm, 10, why did I think this was on here somewhere? Okay, take your time here, Hubbard, you can do this, right here. Amplitude, you see this? Max minus min, vertical shift, max plus min. We just never talked about them before, those definitions. Okay, back here, the period is the length of one cycle so from here to here would be a period because that's how long until it starts over again okay when we put it in the equation though now I need you to pay attention here for a minute the period remember was 2 pi over b well what if we know the period how do we find b Well, the period times b would give you 2 pi, right? If you multiplied that over there. So how would you get b all by itself? The period times b would be 2 pi. If I want b by itself, what do I get? 2 pi divided by the period. Okay, it's just a reciprocal relationship. So... The period, if you put that 2 pi over the period, that will give you back your B value for going into the equation. This will make more sense when we do one. Uh, the shape, we're going to look for that shape somewhere along the line and watch for negative shapes. And the phase shift is going to tell us left, right, and that'll give us the C in the equation, right? Now, every one of these graphs has multiple right answers as the equation. I need everybody to be on board with me here, right? I could call this a sine or a cosine. I could say it shifted left or right. There are some things that wouldn't change, but we have to be really clear that there are multiple right answers. All right, so for this particular one, would you rather call it a sine or a cosine? Why do you say that? Okay, so if we call it a sine, we won't need a phase shift is what you're saying, right? Okay. So if we call it a sine, we won't need a phase shift. Um, the amplitude, well, usually we start with the midline maybe. The midline is clearly still at zero. 
or no vertical shift. The amplitude then, yeah, I guess it's supposed to be at three here and negative three. Okay, the period, I outlined one cycle here and it seems to finish at pi. So how do we find B again? 2 pi over the period. So 2 pi over pi is just 2. We're going to need to put a 2 into our equation. And I think we're golden. Can anybody write the equation yet? Does this axis have a label on your paper? Does it have X or theta or anything? No? Okay. We can use X. It doesn't. Sometimes they use theta, and I don't care. I'll interchange them. I don't care. But anybody come up with the equation? <clears throat> 3 sine 2 is B, right? Is there any phase shift, vertical shift, anything else? No. Nope. I'm going to put parentheses there, but if you didn't have parentheses, it would be fine. Questions? That was an easy, straightforward one. All right, what about this guy? You want to call this a cosine because then we won't need a phase shift, right? Okay. Um, Aislinn, tell me something about it. Say that a little louder. The midline is at right equals zero. Uh, Haley, can you tell me something? Yes, amplitude is 0.5 or one half. Xavier, can you tell me anything? Okay. What does that mean for the B value, guys? 2 pi divided by 6 pi would make the B value 1 third. And that's what goes in the equation, right? Not the 6 pi. And is there a phase shift left or right? If we're calling it a cosine, there's not, right? Because it's maxing at right on the y-axis. All right, can anybody put that together? That's it. Or x over 3, right? Sometimes they'll write that as x over 3. Either one would be fine. All right, what changes here? Yeah, it's definitely got some kind of a vertical shift, right? Now, if it was nasty numbers, most of us can just visually see where the midline's going to be, but if it was nasty numbers, you would average the max and the min. So 3 plus negative 1 would be 2 over 2, so the midline is at 1. Or it's a shift up 1. Either, either answer is fine on that blank. Um, the amplitude. Now... Again, you could visually see that it goes two units above that, but you would say the max minus the min divided by 2 to find the amplitude, which would be 3 plus 1 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. We're going to have some ugly decimal ones in a minute, so I'm trying to show you. Period. What do you want to call it? Sine or cosine, guys? If we do... Cosine, we won't need a phase shift again. What did the period be? Finishes that cycle by pi over 2. So to find B, we take the period. No, I'm sorry, 2 pi over the period. So we'd have 2 pi divided by pi over 2. 
or 2 pi times 2 over pi, which would become 4. So the equation, y equals 2 cosine. Um, now be careful, remember the b, yep. The b is what goes into the equation for, are we done? Okay, now, if you wrote that, I, I wouldn't be very happy with you because, and the book might, I don't know. But if you type that in your calculator, it's not going to work. Because the calculator is going to bring up a parenthesis here, and where do you need to close it for this to be a vertical shift? Yes. Everybody with me? We need to be clear that that's not in x plus 1 phase shift. It is an x plus 1 vertical shift, a 4x, yes. Did you have a question? Okay. Number 4. Tell me one thing, Brandon B. Okay, let's see. I have to find the midline to be able to find the amplitude. That seems right. Yes, going four above and four below. Everybody okay? With a midline at negative two. Um, Jacob, tell me something. Okay, so are you doing sine or cosine? If we start here and we trace out one cycle, it does appear that it's finishing that cycle at 4 pi. And because it started crossing the midline at 0, we called it a sine. Okay. Destiny, can you tell us what B would be then? Yep. This would be 2 pi, the normal period, divided by 4 pi, the new period. So we had a 1 half. Is there a phase shift, guys? Not if we call it a sine, right? Martin, can you put that all together? <laughs> Why? Good job. I'm sorry, honey. I didn't know you were sick. I don't want to call on you. Everybody agreeing that that seems okay? Now, could I check that in my calculator? I could type it in my calculator. What would I need to do? To really check it, I would need to set my window the same size as their window, and I would need to be in what mode? Radians. Okay. I'm not going to bother with this one. We'll check one before we're all said and done here. Oh, this is looking like a really nasty graph. I seem to recall that this is a mess. All right. We can go. This is not cross. Okay. Where do you think the maxes are occurring? That's what we need to figure out. What it, What is the maximum y value? Six, maybe? And the minimum? Negative 10. So from negative 10, up to positive six, and we divide by two, the average of that is negative four. Now what does the average tell us? what's exactly in the middle, right? This is the middle, so it's the midline, is at negative four. Once you know that midline, and then if you said this was six and this is at negative four, what is the, wait a minute, I didn't divide by two, thank you. Yeah, great video. Your negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, so the midline is at negative 2. Let me try that one more time. Once you appropriately find the midline, then it should be the same distance up and down. I knew it wasn't right as soon as I tried to do that. Negative 2 up to 6 is 8, right? 
And negative 2 down to negative 10 is also 8. So what is that 8 telling us? Okay, 8 here and negative 2 here. All right. I think we need to try to figure out... Uh, I don't think it's crossing the midline right at 0. Oh, yeah, cosine. Yeah, we need to try to figure out the y value, though, at these maximums. Cosine is often easier because you can tell where the maxes are. You can't always tell where it's crossing the midline. But what is that? If this is 0, see, I don't think these are labeled accurately at all. Oh, this is 0 over here. Oh, okay, I think then we're better. Because, I don't know, yes, yeah, some are thick randomly. I suddenly feel better about this graph. Because this is the y-axis. See, it has an arrow on it. And so this would be what? Halfway to one-half would be one-fourth. So that's a pi over four. So this is a negative pi over four and a negative three pi over four. So that one is negative 3 pi over 4, 6. And this one, anybody? 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. I will give you some nicely labeled ordered pairs. Yes. This is zero, right? Okay, then there's one, two. Oh, this seems like it's labeled wrong, maybe? There should be. This would be three pi over four. 4 pi over 4 would be pi, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4 would be negative 3 halves. Are you good? All right, so the period is from here to here. How long is that? If you went 5 pi over 4 this way and 3 pi over 4, it's a whole total distance of... 8 pi over 4s, right? Everybody get that? So the period is just 2 pi, so therefore b is just 1 after that nightmare. Okay, but there is a phase shift. The phase shift is, you want to do a positive or a negative cosine graph? If we're going to talk about what we've talked about so far, that's what shape? That's a positive cosine, right? If we do a positive cosine, where did we start? Left 3 pi over 4, didn't we? Is that where I started drawing it? Could you say right 5 pi over 4? Because if you started here, wouldn't it do the same thing all over again? Okay, so you could say or write 5 pi over 4, but the one that I actually have a whole one of is left. Okay, so this was a nightmare to begin with, and now it's gotten even messier. Okay, what's the amplitude? 8. Cosine, what did we decide B was? Just 1. And then we went left 3 pi over 4, which is plus or minus. Yep. And was there a vertical shift outside as well? Down two, right? Okay. Yes, absolutely. And then you would have had to have 
negative 8 cosine, and it would have been to the right of pi over 4. Would that work? Okay. These are really fun to grade because, yes, there are infinite right answers, okay? Um, I was going to try to graph this real fast just to show you how you could check. Okay. Somebody's going to have to read me one that we just wrote. Okay. First of all, my mode needs to be in radians. I am... I need to go to y equals and get rid of this and clear out this, turn my plot off. And we had, somebody read me one. I don't care, the one we wrote on the blank, maybe. Eight cosine x plus three pi over four, which it will do in that order, so I don't need extra parentheses, it wouldn't matter. Minus four. Okay. Um, the window they have is roughly, I'm just going to go negative 2 pi to 2 pi. And their y window was 15 to negative 20. That's weird. Okay, negative 20 to 15 for my max and min. Okay. So it should look like that. Does it look like that, kind of? And then we said that this point was, what, 5 pi over 4? So if I went trace 5 pi over 4, it comes up exactly 6, so that's a good moment, right? Our equation worked to find that point, 5 pi over 4, 6. All right. So that's how you could use a calculator to check. Moving on. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I can't tell where the maxes or mins are. The maximum y value is at 10. The scale is 1. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So the mins are at positive 4. Okay, My, I'm a little concerned though, what, what's in the middle of 10 and 4 then? 10 plus 4 is 14, divided by 2 is 7, 4, 5, 6, 7 is right here. Oh, maybe we can call it a sign? Does it seem to be crossing that midline right there? And right here, because I can't tell where the, exactly the max is. But if we use that point as a sign, I don't know if this is, I will not give you one like this. I would give you ordered pairs. Okay, so if I labeled this ordered pair, negative 3 pi over 2, uh, yikes. What did we call that? 7? And then this one would actually be, I think, pi over 4, comma, 10. And this one would be 3 pi over 2, comma, 7. And this one would be yeah, 3 and a fourth, which would be 13 pi over 4, 4. I don't know. Okay, we're just going to go with that. The amplitude is how far above and below 7 then? 3, because we said it was at 10 and 4. And the vertical shift was up 7. We're going to call it a sine graph, because that's what I finally figured out was a sine right there. And it's crossing the midline here at 3 pi over 2. So the phase shift is... Sine is this shape, so where is it? from a midline going up, right there. So it's been shifted to the left, 3 pi over 2. Are we lost, or we're okay on that part? 
you would have had to figure out what that, if I gave you that ordered pair, pi over four, yes, you absolutely could have done a cosine. I just wasn't sure that that was the right ordered pair. But yes, I will give you ordered pairs. And you can do either a sine or cosine. Yep. <coughs> like, if I told you this minimum, you could have done a negative cosine. Yeah. Um, the period, guys. Well, I have from negative 3 pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 is half of the cycle. So that would be 6 pi over 2, which would be how much? 6 over 2 is 3 pi, so the whole thing must be 6 pi. Yeah, I'm just going to finish this question, and then we're going to forget we ever did this one, all right? 2 pi over 6 pi is 1 third. What I need to do is put some ordered pairs on it for next class before we ever start the question. Y equals amplitude of 3. We called it a sine. We said B was 1 third. We did a phase shift. I'm out of room. Why do I always think I can slide this over to the left and right? Have I ever been able to slide to the left and right? No. But, um, 1 third X to the left, 3 pi over 2 would be plus and up seven hey anyone want to cry a little bit okay i i swear it won't be that gross all right then we have a, a real life situation we will eventually do a lot of this where i don't even give you the graph i just give you the word problem and you have to write the whole story and graph it or write the equation and graph it i mean these situations can be modeled with trig functions. For example, the graph below shows the height of, as a function of time for a ride on a Ferris wheel. Okay, so at time zero, they got on the Ferris wheel. They were not on the ground. They had already walked up five feet. Everybody see that? Makes sense. You don't get on a Ferris wheel on the ground, right? Otherwise, every time your cart went around, your feet would hit the ground. Okay, so it's five feet up. The maximum height they ever went was 35. So the average of that is what? What's in the middle? What is that telling us? Midline is going to be 20. So on our equation, which I have no room to write, uh, where's that going to go? The very end, there's going to be a plus 20. Okay. What else can you tell me? Okay, I want to know what that has to do with the Ferris wheel. It is the radius of the Ferris wheel. Do you understand that if this distance is 15, then you are going 15 above and 15 below as you travel around, right? So the amplitude is 15. That's going to go out front. What do you want to call this? A negative cosine, since it seems to start at the min and do that. Does that seem okay? So I'm going to put a negative out in front of the 15 and then write cosine. Now, the period is not as exact. Well, maybe we can tell. Can you see where it's hitting right on a line? Right there. Doesn't it hit? And at 7? But what's it doing in between each of those? Two cycles, right? So if 3.5 is two revolutions, this dot must be at what's half of 3.5? 1.5. Is that right? Somebody checking me? 3.5 divided by 2? Okay. 7 fourths. Okay. So the period is seven-fourths of a minute. How do we put that into our equation? What do we do? It's not C or B or anything. Two pi divided by seven-fourths will be our B value. So two pi times four over seven is eight pi over seven. That's lovely. 
But you have to have a pi in the equation if there's not a pi on the graph because it has to divide out somewhere. All right, let's type it in real fast. Somebody read it to me. Negative 15 cosine 8 pi over 7. Uh-oh, I think I needed x parenthesis. Well, I didn't get one. <laughs> Really? Insert. Oh, I got to tell it what to insert, dummy. Oh, then I didn't do. Okay. 8 pi over 7 and then an X. Is there a shift left or right? No. So I'm just going to close the parenthesis. And then plus 20. And my window is 0 to how many seconds out did they go or minutes out? Does the graph paper go? And 0 to 40. Okay, is that looking right? Now give me a point that's on our ordered, a given or ordered pair. Trace 7. Come on. Enter. Is that 7, 5? Does it look like 1, 2, 3, fourth time you've hit the bottom? Yay, we're magical. Okay. All right, how do we put this in our calculator? Is it yours working? Is you okay? Okay, stat, enter, and I forgot to do this ahead of time today, so you're going to maybe help Puff Bauer out by reading these. We have August we're starting with, huh? Do they skip any months? They love to skip months. So... 8, 9, 10. I don't know if this is going to work. Can we do 1? Start with back at 1? Oh, that's confusing me. You want to call August 1? I think we could do it either way. I think we could just go 11, 12, no, that's going to, let's call this one, okay, it's messing me up and I don't have time to be messed up today, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, how many months did they give us? 10, 11, 12, okay, whoops, I'll mess with it later and see if it would matter, but, okay, who's got these? Thank you. 22, 28, 27. Oh, they're decimals even? Oh, good God. 28.27. 40. Oh, I messed up already. Hang on. 45.9. We should have picked a different question. 68.3, I Did I hit enter? Yes, okay. 115.6, 103.5. Ninety-two point two, sixty-eight point eight. I swear you won't have this question on the quiz. Because I'm going to get one typed in wrong. I can just about guarantee it. What is the last one? 28.27? Okay. I'm going to turn my stat plot on and do a zoom fit just so we can see if this is looking. Oh, and I'm gonna turn that Ferris wheel off. 
Okay, it's looking sinusoidal. Did did you try putting it in the other way? Yes, I'm roughly there. Okay. But like the stat plot is not. Yeah, if you turn your stat plot on, I'm just curious if it still looks sinusoidal. Okay. To find the equation, it only asks us to find an equation anyway. So stat, right arrow, down to sign regression. Make sure you're in what mode? Radians. And store it, even though I don't think it asks us to predict anything, does it? Okay, so you write this down using a couple decimal places. What did it look like, Destiny? If you put it in as 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, it worked? Okay, awesome. Yes, that, that will help me much when I try to do it next hour. Remember, this one is not in factored form, not that it matters. We're just copying the numbers off the screen here onto our paper. Okay. What could we use to predict this? Well, if, because they don't ask us to do anything with it, do they? On the worksheet? Okay, if I have this going on in my calculator, um, I could predict the next time it hits, uh, when is the next time it's going to hit a cost of $100 for the price of gas in Patagonia, right? So I could put in a line at 100. I'm just trying to show you that there is. So the next time it's going to hit that and we could figure out when that would be or something, okay? Or you could figure out what the price is going to be on June 15th by putting in like 6.5 months or whatever. All right, moving on. Oh, we do have a few review questions here. Uh, this is a really good moment to do these because this is going to be on the next quiz again, remember? How do we change this? Maury pulls a cord on his lawnmower to start it. Not a cord cord, it's like a rope. In order for the engine to pull the start, the pulley must turn 150 revolutions a minute. It has a radius of 0.24. How many radians per second must it turn? Some of you thought RPMs meant revolutions or meant radians per minute. It doesn't. The R stands for revolutions per minute. So how are we going to change this? They want radians per second. 2 pi radians is one revolution. Everybody... Okay, with that change, and I need seconds, so what do I need to say? One minute is 60 seconds. So I need to type 150 times 2 times pi divided by 60. I'm thinking it's to be around 15. No? No? It's 5 pi, though. Can you type what 5 pi is? 15.7 uh, radians per second, or 5 pi. Okay, how fast must Mori pull the cord to actually start, which would be a linear velocity in feet per second? So the linear velocity is angular velocity times radius. So we had 5 pi radians per second times a radius of what? 0.24 feet, isn't that what it says up here? And that'll give us feet per second, so we don't have to do any more converting. 5 times 0.24 times pi. How fast do you have to yank that cord? Five pi times 0.24 is 3.7 anybody 3.8 somebody else get that feet per second so I don't anybody ever hit pull start an old mower okay four feet 
That makes sense, right? In one second. You gotta yank it all out in one second. Yeah, that seems about right. Okay. 14B. Want me to do one off 14B? We got a little time, or do you wanna do another regression? <gasps> Thank you. I knew there was something I messed up yesterday. 